Kia ora, good evening. You're here with Boys Get Paid. Coming at you live from the Export Beer Garden Studio on another Thursday night. I'm Matt. Luke is in uh, in flight at the moment. We understand he's offered another wedding. But we've got Matt and Dan here. How are you, Dan? Yeah, mate, I'm good. I'm fired up, ready to roll. Good man. We've had a few beers at the pub before, so uh, yeah, Luke wasn't around to keep um, keep us under control. So this might get a little bit loose. Anything can happen. You've loaded up free there. <laughs> You're waiting for Gwendolyn and Mary at Cambridge. One of your horses, mate. Seven oh two. Oh man, bred this one, and it's uh, have, having its second start. Bit of a cat, but you never know. Mate, five dollars each way. Why not? It's paying sixty ones. Good luck if you have a crack at it. Thank you very much to everybody who is joining us tonight. It's great to have you here with us. As always, we've got the Auckland Cup this week, the Bone Crusher, the Sistema Stakes, Imperatrix is racing in Australia, Skew Whiffs racing in Australia as well. It's a great weekend's racing. We've got some great events to talk through as well. Some of you might have seen some news from today about the race by Grins, which Dan will get to. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to this weekend, Dan. It's a very, very good day's racing at Ellsley again. The Cup, the big one. Mm. Um, and it's such an open affair. Uh, looks like a really exciting race, and if you pick the winner in this one, I think you're going to get paid. Definitely, eh? There's a lot of value to be found. We'll go through that, the Bone Crusher and Sistema Stakes as well. Um, make sure you get your best bets in, as always. I feel like we're rattling this off a lot, but you do go in the draw to get a $100 bet on your best bet. Uh, G Zame had $100 last week on Ethereal Star. We both liked Ethereal Star, but it was a bit of a flop, wasn't it? Yeah, it didn't go too well. Uh, yeah, it didn't go too well for my bank account either. Didn't it? So you got on as well, mate. You need the bonus bet. I thought it was in a really good position and didn't, uh, unfortunately, didn't get the job done. But uh, yeah, hard luck, geez, aim. Get your best bets in. Who's going to win the Auckland Cup? Who's going to win the Sistema? Who's going to win the Bone Crusher? Who's going to win Australia? Let us know. We will read them out at some point, and on Saturday you'll find out who that winner of the best bet is. We've come through the weekend. Uh, it wasn't too big a day for some of us. Uh, Luke might be listening in on this pod thinking, geez, lads, well, it was a pretty big day for me. <laughs> he had a big day at the Derby. But, uh, yeah, we were very, very lucky to be at the winning post, uh, the new bar mm-hmm. opened by TAB in collaboration with the Auckland Thoroughbred Racing Club um, at Ellerslie on Saturday. And it was a hell of a day out, wasn't it? Mate, it was so good. That bar is awesome. Yeah. Um, like it's just in such a prime location. I feel like the vibes are really good everywhere. Um, yeah, met, met a bunch more people again, but just had a really good time. Uh, the food was outstanding. Oh, duck on a buffet. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Have you ever seen duck on a buffet? Mate, I, well, I think we knew we were the same because we were going <laughs> together, but I sort of got to the end of the buffet and my plate was this, it was just an absolute mountain. Yeah. And I was thinking, I'm going to have to carry this past everyone. Everyone's going to think, who's this fat? <laughs> What's going on there? Who gives a shit? It's good. <laughs> Mate, I was a duck. Honestly, I've, ne- I've been to a buffet a few times and never had duck. I thought it was great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was good times. Good on you guys. Thank you very much for organising. And honestly, hats off to everybody that has been a part of that. The lounge looks really cool. TAB have done such a great job and they're so proud of it as well, you know? They walk into the room, they ask you how you think it looks, and everybody's given them really good feedback on it. So well done. And well done, obviously, to the Auckland Thoroughbred Racing Club as well for working in collaboration and making sure um, that we've got a very good zone to go to there. Um, I don't know. One thing I just felt about the day, Dan, was that – how have we gone? We've just got bowled over at the 150, and it almost fell over. <laughs> so this is your dad's horse debut. Yeah, it came out and might have run top four. It was going all right, and then a horse inside just – Pushed it out and almost made it fall over. Oh, gutted. Okay. Yep. Go again? Uh, I don't know. You have to watch the replay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. One thing I felt about the day on Saturday being a part of that lounge um, was it was so welcoming. You really felt like you were in amongst a, a, um, a racing environment, you know, and not only us, but everybody else from the BGP community that bought tickets to go along and from the TAB community too. All of the TAB team are there. PWs, Paul Wilcox is standing at the gate, you know, in between where all the horses are, saying good day to everybody, making everybody feel welcome. It feels like there's a really good vibe going on there at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone from TAB Entain as well was like going out of their way to introduce themselves, say hello, have a bit of a chat. And, you know, just as a, as a sort of punter that's come along and bought a $150 ticket for the Boys Get Paid event to go and be a part of that and, you know, shake hands with the marketing manager and this person and that person and have a little bit of a chat and different people. It's awesome. Yeah. And it's not just us. It's everybody. They're chatting to everybody. It's really, really cool. So uh, well done to everybody that's involved in that. The one other thing I think and some feedback to Ellerslie was that the vibe going into Ellerslie was really cool too. I remember going to the Everest. We all, all obviously went along last year. 
And I think there were like flamingo dancers or some shit going on when you walk into Randwick. I was like, wow, this is really cool. I walked in uh, to Ellerslie the other day, and I think it was um, Smooth Criminal, Michael Jackson, some bloke standing there strumming a guitar playing it. I looked on the right-hand side. There were some bouncy castles. There were people around. There was music. The gardens were in check. They had some uh, parsley in the garden on the left, actually, that I noticed. I thought that was quite good. Take a bit of that, did you? Oh, <laughs> I might if I'm going there next week. But, uh, yeah, they're really making an effort to make it feel like a bit of a festival environment. I remember looking out from the lounge and seeing people out on the lawn out the front with their families and kids running around. It's a great place to go and spend a Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. And it was actually, um, you know, early on I was thinking, oh, God, the crowd's not that great. But it really it, it grew, and then it ended up being sort of a decent-sized crowd. Yep. And then I was listening to Pete up talking about um, this weekend, and it sounds like ticket sales have gone really well. And this uh, this weekend, Auckland Cup, for whatever reason, seems to attract a lot of people, and it's going to be a pretty pretty busy day down there. Yeah. Absolutely. I actually had a mate text me this afternoon asking me if I'm going to the races. I don't think he'd ever gone to his races in his life. So, it's uh, yeah, it's good. It's definitely attracting the people. And well done to everybody that's involved in that. We understand. We're not quite sure what the details are yet, but this lounge, the TAB are working out ways how it can be available for the regular punter uh, on certain race days in the year as well. If you've got a TAB account, you might just be able to pitch up and get in. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things they've got to sort of try and figure out is how much demand there's going to be for that space as well and how they sort of allocate that and figure that out and work that out because it's a pretty sick spot. Like, the bar is really nice. Um, and so I'm sure everyone would want to be involved and be in there. So they've probably just got to sort of work it out and figure out, well, how do they get people involved? And, um, yeah, yeah, it, admin, that's not for me. And even <laughs> That's exactly right. They even had the cricket on in there. They had the screens up. It was, yeah. Honestly, if you get the opportunity to go along, you don't want to miss out next time. Um, and if there are opportunities just to pitch up on a race day and get in there, that's your place to be. It's it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and I guess all the stuff that we're talking about here is just that there's such a good vibe going on in racing. And uh, luckily, we're riding on the coattails of it because we've got a whole bunch of events coming up, which is pretty unusual for this time of the year. But um, we're not trying to overdo it. But honestly, there's just such a great vibe that we might as well try and um, have a crack at a few things and get a few th- more things going for the BGP community and for everybody out there who wants to be involved with it. Before the bloody winter racing sets in and winter sets in, we might as well have a bit of fun before we go, eh? So, race by grins, mate. It's coming along well. Yeah, it is, mate. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> very excited. There's been a, been a fair bit of work going on in the background. Um, but the big news coming out today, and I think Fitzy got a little bit trigger happy and sent out a post early, but... Uh, Happy with that, but the boys get paid punters club for the first time is going to be at a exclusive harness meeting. Um, so we've punted on harness before at um, I think it was the New Zealand Cup week in 2022. Um, we had a good outcome, I think. Um, we had Fitzy and Matt uh, Markham. Yep, uh, both doing the tipping. They're going to be in charge of the harness punters club this year. Just running through a few of their stats because I was having a bit of a look. Um, that's a that's a uh, that a good return on investment. Yeah. Uh, through the cup week, I think they're punting at uh, Tuesday, Friday, and then Ash Burton or Cash Burton, I think, was on Thursday. Oh, that's right. Like that well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think they had three bets at Cash Burton and collected a, a had a decent collect on um, one of the horses. I can't remember the name of it, but um, yeah, I think they overall they punted two hundred and four thousand one hundred twenty five dollars. For a return of four hundred and forty nine thousand one hundred nineteen, Cyrus twelve thousand dollars each way for a collective two hundred and forty six thousand dollars. Holy! Yeah, I remember Cyrus actually because I was watching the TV and the p- camera panned to Fitzy charging around the Lord like when it's first <laughs> like he was so bloody excited. But it, you know they they put in the mahi and they like they, they found the form and they got the value and that was a great great bet. There'll be more of those. Yeah, outstanding bet. Yeah, and so Cambridge, I think uh, we've got ten ten races on the night. Um, we've got the TAB trot. Uh, slot trot and then the um, the race by grins which is going to be huge so a big shout out to Dave Branch from Cambridge um, it's been an absolute legend and um, you know just done uh, absolutely everything for us to try and get this off the ground as well as you know trying to organize the event and do everything as well and then also a big shout out to HRNZ as well sort of for helping put together the punters club and, and I'm really hoping that this is now the opportunity for harness you know to really take um uh, latch on to this and sort of take this and let's see if, you know, I mean, the whole, all, all the eyes uh, of the world, yeah, the the racing world are going to be on harness to see how we how we do this. Um, and I'd love to see 
you know, all the different racing clubs, uh, get behind it, get involved, share it, share it across your socials. Uh, HRNZ, really get behind it. All the media personalities that are involved with harness racing. Let's see if we can really hype this up and build this up because um, I can tell you now, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident there's 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 probably some cash in the kitty already. Yeah, we tried, need- tried to get an update, but uh, Kimmy's is on a plane, so there's no uh, no update. But maybe from someone from the TAB maybe wants to post in the comments and let us know how we're going. Luke doesn't have enough to do if he's flying somewhere for a wedding. Yeah. Eh? I can't believe it. Let us know where the balance is at, mate. If you're listening in. <laughs> yeah. So just a few details on the um, on the uh, race by grins. Um, We've sold. I think we're we're. Uh, there's only thirty tickets left at the uh, early bird price. So the last thirty tickets, once they're gone at the early bird price, the price is going to go up. Um, we also have a restricted number of tickets. So once the first hundred are gone, um, so there's thirty more at the early bird price. Once those first hundred are gone, we're only going to have another fifty tickets. The price is going to increase. Um, but then th- those are all the tickets. That, that's all we have. We have limited capacity. That's uh, that's the capacity we have, and then that's it. So first in, first serve. So if you want to get a ticket and you're thinking about getting a ticket, get it now. You can also at the same time buy a $30 bus ticket, um, and that's a return bus trip as well from Hamilton to Cambridge, and then they take you from Cambridge back to Hamilton, and they've got the uh, after party at House on Hood, mm. uh, which is it's going to be electric punk that's open till 3, 3 a.m. or something. So, I mean, I won't be up there. Well, I might be. Who knows? Um, you definitely will be, mate. The family's away. Yeah. What, have, what else have you got to do? I've, I've, from some messages that we received today, it sounds like we'll be travelling on that bus ride, won't we, back to Hamilton to stay the night? And 100%. Kick on? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Join us. It'll be great. The after party at Cambridge, they do have a band. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that you finally... <laughs> I'm disappointed to not know them. So I'm probably going to butcher the uh, the name of this, but it's Kotari uh, or Co- Coterie. Have you heard of them, Adam? Yep. Yeah, Coterie, yeah. So, Any um, good? Uh, they're a huge band. They have... They had like a chart topping song for like the last six months to a year. They're like a they tour Australia and they tour New Zealand. It's kind of like a bit of bit of dub. Oh, cool. Bit of dub kind of music. It's it's a bit more in the poppy thing. Oh, they, yeah. they 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 all look like brothers. I am and they are absolutely good lads. I've seen them around the office a few times. Good. Be- yeah, they, beautiful voices. That cool. yeah, they are brothers. So they're winners of the Best New Artist Award at the two thousand and twenty three Rolling Stones Aotearoa Awards. Whoa. Uh, and they were actually the first band that was signed by 660's music label, Massive Records. Okay. There you go. I, yeah, I, now that I think about it further, I have heard one of their songs, which is outstanding. So that's bloody great news, mate. It's not Fat Boy Slim, but it's uh, Coteddy. Yeah. Great. I'm glad that we finally got there after a few weeks. Eh? Fired up, ready to go, <laughs> mate. I, I'd done a bit of admin, and I tried to figure everything out and figure out what's going on. Um, I also just seen that Barrett Holmes secured um, a horse... Um, for their slot as well, um, it was one that raced in it last year. And now it's copy that. No, it's evaporated by menu. Uh, Super memory. duper Luca. <laughs> no, oh. no, 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 no. Um, anyway, we'll come back to it. We'll, come back we'll to come it. Gwendolyn Murray. No, 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 no. It's not. <laughs> oh, mate, uh, it's going to be outstanding. Like you say, Dan. Um, there's still tickets available, and the Punters Club is now open on the TAB website. Is that right, or on you, through the TAB app? It's ready to roll. Get in there. Rock and roll do. Get your dollars in there. Everything you win this Saturday mm-hmm. should go into it. We're going to get to the uh, race form at some point as well, but we want you to keep your best bets coming in. We obviously want you to buy tickets to the Race by Grins as well because we want all of you there to enjoy it with us. Um, but keep your best bets rolling in too. Uh, some news on the live stream on April the 6th that's been coming through as well. Because of uh, the success of Saturday at the Winning Post Bar at Ellerslie, it sounds like we're going to go on live stream down there Hopefully with an open bar. Is that are we confirming that? Uh yeah, go on. I'm then. not let's sure con- if we're allowed to. Yeah, let's fire it up, mate. Let's put the pressure on. If PW's uh, in the comments, he yeah, can get in P- there now, P- eh? Yeah, PW, <laughs> if you're listening, mate, can we uh, can we confirm that? Are we good to go? Or what's going on? That's Paul Wilcox, Adam. Keep an eye out if he's commenting. He'll let us know if we're going to be there. Yeah, I'm pumped, mate. That would be so good. Like uh, I could just, I was picturing it the other day when we were there. I was thinking, mate, would have the table set up right there? They've got like five screens. Yeah. And man, how good would that be? We could just sit there and just punt our faces off all day. It'll be like being at the Star Hotel, but on a live stream. Remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> Star Hotel, yeah. there's a screen. Oh, fuck, what are we putting? What's that? There's, well, there's a grey. We're betting on that. <laughs> that was so good. Yo, mate, that would be such a great day. And there's, um, 
there, there's such good racing that day. As Champions well, Day out of Sydney, which is excellent. First day, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that is Champions Day the day that uh, the race that Prowess won last year that perhaps Orchestral is going to? Um, we probably should have done our stats on that before we started talking about this. No, so well, the Queen Elizabeth is on the <laughs> on the final day of the Champions um, okay. Champions Carnival, but uh, the first day I think it's like the Epsom, maybe. Right. Okay. Uh, there, there's like three or four group ones. I think it's a big day. It's going to be there's a great the derby, day. maybe with the Oaks. So yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's all happening. We'll be stri- streaming live in collaboration with the Alternative Commentary Collective, as always. And uh, yeah, it sounds like there might be a bit more news to follow on this. So just yeah, keep an eye on the April the sixth Champions Day. A reminder as well, of course, the Warriors. They kick off their season tomorrow night. Um, and the Warriors game versus the Sea Eagles, we are going to be having an event there the day after the race by Grins, uh, or it could be still the same day for some people. Um, who knows? You know, you might just roll on down uh, to Mount Smart. Oh, go, go, go Media Stadium for the Warriors versus Sea Eagles. More details to follow on that. The Warriors are very busy prepping for tomorrow night's game against the Sharks, but we should have some more details out. Um, next week, the Sharks tomorrow night. That's going to be a hell. I can't wait for the Wars season. Shit, are the Wars going to go to Vegas next year? That was good. Uh, I don't know, mate. I mean, if they do, I do. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. BGP event. Ooh. Do you reckon they'll have us in Vegas? Mate, that, how, <laughs> what? That's, that could be a step too far. Uh, yeah, right. We no, need let, Luke here to let's do keep, it. keep some perspective no, on no, Let's do it. <laughs> Sign us up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It'll be great. We'll live stream from there. Yeah. Adam, you got to come. Hey, one bloke Done. that we um, one bloke that we got to interview on Saturday was Rodney Sheck from Windsor Park Stud. I think Luke called him the bull, um, and honest to God, he was an absolute weapon. He whacked me on the chest afterwards, saying thanks. I fucking almost fell over. <laughs> he was so strong. What an absolute legend! And he, if you haven't seen it yet, we've um, we've posted up Windsor Park Stud. They've got the rugby, racing, and beer. Sports luncheon and live yearling sale Friday, third of May at Rickerton. Glenn Boss is going to be there. Um, you can check the Windsor Park Stud website for all the details if you want to get along. Geez, if Rodney Schick's involved, I'd want to be there. <laughs> How good. He is amazing, eh? Hey? Yeah, Isn't they were he? good fun. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. I really rated that. So, uh, yeah, check our Facebook page if you want to see more information on that or head to Windsor Park Stud website. There's plenty of information. Just go down there to meet Rodney. Great I'm, luck. I'm glad I just I'm glad I got the sound on that one. <laughs> Imagine him coming after you. Oh, apologies to those that we interviewed. Uh Briar, Mickey G as well, the legend. He had a bet to throw out. How did that bet go? I can't remember what it was because <laughs> I couldn't hear anything. We've interviewed some people on mute. How amateur is that, eh? But we hopefully brought a few good interviews to people. Briar Weatherly as well after Maria Farina got the job done on Saturday. That was outstanding. We had some good best bets come home over the weekend. The scam man got winning bones home on Friday. He's on a pretty good, uh, pretty good run at the moment. I think he's two from two last week. That was good. Yeah, I think, and think overall, like sort of the last sort of ten weeks, he's been going pretty hot as well. Yeah, yeah, he's um, he's sending them through. It was the first time he's got it through on a Wednesday night this week, so he must be keen about his best bet, which is coming up later in the show. The goat got another one home. He's nine from. What is he? Last 11 bets, nah, nine wins and two thirds. He, he got Mayor of Norwood home early for us at Winger 2 Yeah, That was good. That was outstanding. We were mm. shooting that video, and um, and I was like watching it off on the side of the screen. Not all that was going on, and I, I couldn't tell if that was us coming down the outside, and sure enough, it was. Yeah. And then um, the goat was in the room afterwards to interview. We didn't even know who was going to be there. Day. How good is oh, that? Uh, so good. Good to see you, goat, as always, mate. Thank you very much for uh, for making an appearance. Um, I thought the two unlucky best bets, mine was just hopeless, but the two unlucky best bets, it was, it was, I like the horse, but uh, yeah, it didn't run well. Uh, the two unlucky ones were probably Ted with Irish Legacy, just didn't get a crack. And then you with Same Wah um, were flying home for third. Yeah, absolutely bombed down the outside. And I thought, um, I thought that might be the case. I was hoping there'd be a little bit more pace in the race and maybe, um, a couple of its wins over the 1,200 have been able to thread its way through the middle of the field. But, yeah, just coming uh, coming around the outside and having to do that extra work. It was a great one run, and, and I still got $3 for top three, so it was good value. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, good finish. And we will talk about the derby. And, of course, Luke got his best bet home in the derby. Hopefully you guys got some of that as well. That was a great bet. Just as sharp and ascend the throne, top five. Um, that was a great best bet thrown out by Luke there. But... Uh, the star of the show, really, in the derby was orchestral. I, honestly, that horse could just be absolutely amazing. At the corner with, what, 400 metres to go, you're just like, this is going to clean them up. Yeah, yeah. She was absolutely jogging, eh? 
Um, it was quite interesting to see her so far back at probably like the 800, but then just started to move and crept around, crept around. And then when you seen that when it come on the turn, and she was probably still three links off them, but she was just absolutely jogging. Mm. And then um, I don't think she was even hit with a whip. And just oh, really? put them away. Yeah, I don't think she, I think it was just hands and heels. Well, she came back in because where we are, you know, the horses all come back in. Like, the rest of them were bloody, like, struggling. She was, like, ready to run another race. There's something. That she is probably got to go on the next in the 1200 and beat yeah. them up as well. <laughs> yeah, as well eh? You had a few winners in the derby, mate. You did. Good <laughs> run there. Mate, it was such a good. Uh, Your I can't smile believe was I beaming didn't... after it. Yeah. I can't believe I didn't see any of this because um, I, I just didn't dig into it enough. But I found the. Orchestral win by three plus links was four dollars twenty. Um, All right, I'm pretty sure it was four twenty anyway. I smacked that really hard, and then there was plus two links was like two dollars seventy or something. So I smacked that, and then um, I seen the throne was top three. I think it was two dollars thirty or something. So I smacked mm. that, and um, it just everything won. And then obviously uh, Luke's best bet as well. I had a crack on that, but I just won everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Got it, all. Like, it was unbelievable. I got it all. After sort of getting beaten up quite a bit before that, yeah. like I was sort of going up and down, but mainly down throughout the day. Um, to have that, like, just really turn the day around. It was a tough old morning to get started with, eh? So I'm glad you fought back from that. Shout out to Reese Trumper um, and Tayako from that Tuesday night, those interviews. They really like to send the throne, eh? I, I mean, I know Luke did some form, and afterwards he thought, oh, yeah, that's a good horse too. But um, yeah, they really gave us a good nudge on it, didn't they? Absolutely. And Two dollars thirty for top three. Like you'd just take that, eh? Take yep. that all day. They also go over Saltari as well. Yep, that was right actually. Thursday and Saturday. Um yeah, that was an awesome race. I mean, yeah, when you think about that three plus lengths, you sort of you know, I guess you're a little bit concerned about some of them running the distance for the first time, but that was obvious in hindsight. The horse is just way better than anything that's going around as a three year old. Yeah. Apart the big- from maybe Molly Bloom. Yeah, the biggest challenge, obviously, was the 2400. Like, that's the big unknown going before is like, well, is it going to be good enough to just get home because it's just that good and it's not really good at 2400? Mm. Or is it going to do what it done and just like put them in a body bag and probably could have won by more? Yeah. Uh, Maybe they're uh, saving some for Aussie. Eh? Did you get some of Antrim Coast? There's always one, eh? Fuck, I don't even know what it was paying, but geez, where did that come from? That was a lot. Actually, 12 should... bucks a place or something, wasn't it? Oh, it's crazy, eh? Crazy, there is always one in the derby. Um, certainly was a good winner. We understand going over to Australia as well from that day. And the Rangi Toto Classic, which um, I think maybe, I, I mean, I had a bet on Paul the Wine. Of course I did. Uh, I was, I'm in love with the horse. But Jaffe, we talked about on Thursday night, it was at 11s to win. And then come Saturday morning, it's paying sixes. And we've all missed it. That's crazy. Eh? Better run one. I can't believe um, it was so funny that night. And I missed the opportunity when I was posting that the other day on the socials is not only could we not back it to win, we couldn't fucking say its name. (laughs) (laughs) Jafira? Jafri? I'm pretty sure it's just Jaffe, isn't it? Apparently it's Ifraj backwards, Cambridge Stud. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So Jaffe? Jaffe, yeah, Yeah. just simple as that. But we'll call it like Jafira and all sorts of stuff. (laughs) But, yeah, I missed an opportunity there with that. But, um, yeah, just absolutely smoked him. That was a good good run. Really good win, eh? (laughs) The uh, Cambridge stud colours to the fore again. And um, just the last one to mention, Quintessa over in Australia was obviously very, very good coming home for fourth. Again, that was paying about 650 top four, I think, when I looked at it last on Saturday afternoon. And it's not – it was – it, that's a good bet. Like, it it was coming home so well in all of its runs this season. Yeah, I had it top three. How oh, of course good. you did, mate. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> How good. Greedy. Righto, mate. Should we crack on on this weekend unless there's anything else that you wanted to mention from the weekend? Yeah, just the uh, Maria Farina situation oh, and yeah, Dragon yeah, yeah. Leap. Okay. I wasn't um, going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had it right. I almost had it right. That's just, you know. Dragon but, Leap's been closer than it has all season. I'll give you that. Yeah, mate, there was some... We were chatting about tears. I was that that defe- I was I was pretty defeated after that. Like I had a bit on. Did you? Yeah, had a bit on, and um, I thought that he'd got there, but just uh, it was I, I, uh, mate. Yeah, I just don't know if I can go again. Has it got another run in it this summer? I think it needs to have a break. Needs to bring it back. <laughs> I need a break as well. It won the Foxbridge Plate. It'll, it'll win it again. <laughs> I was on Maria Farina, so I was really happy with that. I, I was just absolutely stoked. I thought. 
It's uh, its last few runs have that been got, great. They got back then as well. Wasn't it yeah. like 12 bucks or something? And it closed at 650 or something even less, was it? Which I was surprised with. I actually thought it would drift. But obviously mm-hmm. some people knew things that we didn't. And Bonnie Lass looked like the winner until about 200 metres to go. And they just sort of all run their race, apart from Dragon Leap, who, who gave it a good crack. Yeah, came home strong. So. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, let's move on from that. What's the blessed bet this week, mate? Um, the blessed bet last week was has to be a winner who looked the winner again. <laughs> 200 metres to go. Couldn't quite get the job done, but um, are you going to give us the best, best bet for this week? I understand that one of the lads has got it as their best, and we'll get to that later. Yeah, mate. So we'll go to race two at Ellerslie, financier. Um, and interestingly, the form line stacks up here because if you go back and look at financier's last win, guess who runs second? Snazzy Tavi. Ja- <laughs> Close. Same colours. Jaffy. Jaffy must have Jaffy. raced Snazzy Tavi somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same colours. So... Um, it's a pretty strong race. We've got Rudyard, which I think is a BGP favourite by this point, right? Like it's uh, been backed in a few times. We've made a bit of cash off it. And then Adam, Adam I am as well, a uh, good horse. But Financier's win last start was um, was outstanding. Like it yep. was a really good win. And so we've boosted that. It's boosted from 3.2 to 3.6. Race to Ellerslie, meeting two. Get on. Absolutely. And just remember, if you do take the blessed bet in that race, you won't get the bonus back option. Um, but, you know, if you're just that confident, then take the $3.60. So, yep, one of the lads' best bets later in the show. We will get to that. Let us know what your best bets are. Keep them coming in, people. I'm hoping when we get to it, there's going to be a shitload of comments there because I've been following some of the um, some of the best bets comments that have been coming through and putting some bets on it. I've been winning a little bit. Not an ethereal star last week, but it is great to see everybody um, and what they've been, what they think is going to be the best. So keep them coming in. Right, Cup Day, Ellerslie. Uh, apparently, it's going to be a full noise crowd on Saturday for Auckland Cup Day, which is excellent. Haven't even looked at the weather, but I just always assume a good track um, this summer for some reason in Auckland. It's been such a great summer, so hopefully that is the case. Race five, the Sistema Stakes. We've got Velocious, the Karaka Millions winner, who absolutely smashed them on Karaka Millions night. We've got Captured by Love. Um, who has been very, very, very good as well. The Tayako uh, two-year-old, a whole bunch of others which have got a lot of form. To me, Dan, this looks like a really good race that I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, this is um, yeah, this is a this is a good race. Um, this is a good horses race as well. Like Velocious was so good in the two-year-old with J Mac on board. Um, I thought Captured by Love last start. Was very impressive when going up against, um, what was that Philly called Alabama Lass? Beat Al- Alabama Lass, and there yep. was quite a bit of chat. I think Alabama Lass ended up favourite. There was quite a bit of cash coming from Alabama Lass. I've said it won its race before by six hundred and fifty-five lengths or something like that. And, um, everyone <laughs> thought it was probably six point five. Yeah, that was <laughs> up. Yeah. Um, so. I think in this race, you're almost saying, well, which one's going to win out of those two? Uh, Captured by Love or Velocious, and you sort of go with whoever you think is going to win. Um, if I was going to have a bet in this race, I did actually have a look, and I seen um, Velocious to finish top two and Savagely to win a, uh, win, uh, finish top three. Um, I think that's your trifecta. Uh, Velocious, Captured by Love, and Savagely. I thought Savagely was so impressive last start coming over the top of Poetic Champion. Um, and it looked like it sort of figured out racing. Um, so I might even just have a little each way crack on Savag Lee to maybe upset and get over the top of both of these. Um, but if I'm going to have a decent bet, I'd be going, uh, that's it, Velocious top two and then Savag Lee top three. Interesting. I just, I've just had a look back at their last races because I saw Full Force run at Otaki yesterday and it smashed them. I don't know what the field was like, but it smashed them and it looked really, really good. Uh, Savagly Poetic Champion beat um, Full Force. Actually, moved to strike was in that race too, who Tarko have got a big impression of. But Full Force mm-hmm. ran last in that race and just went out and smashed some other two-year-olds yesterday. So the form stacks up a little bit there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, I think Savagely has been um, like racing really ungenerously and, and, and you know sort of maybe not very tractable. And I think maybe he put it together that last start where he sort of went to sleep, relaxed and then got out at the right time and like he really powered home as well so yeah looks a good horse yeah that's a it's a it's a very good race i really liked um yeah i, I really like velocious I, I i don't know just the way that it beat them so well in the karaka millions there's been such a rap on it this season 
that it could be a very good horse. Um, Archaic Smile as well has been going really well. I know Luke's like that horse as well. It was very unlucky in its last run, so I could see that running in the top four. Not that there's probably going to be a lot of value for that. Forever in time, for me, that ran at Ellerslie for uh, Peter Williams' um, last start. Ran at Ellerslie, won really well in very, very good time. He's paying $16 to win, but I just wonder whether that could be a nice top four option. And I see there's a market uh, captured by love, top three, forever in time, top four for $3.60. So I'll probably have a bet at that as well as Velocious to win because I think Velocious has just handled everything that it's taken. It, it, the only race it hasn't won is that... Bloody New Year's Day race where okay. Bellatrix Star and it was yeah you know, the track we can all forget about that <laughs> but the way that it put them away at Karaka Millennium's night and good time with good sectionals, um, yeah I can't see it being beaten but yeah Savagly like you say these two year olds improve pretty quickly so if it improves again you just never know you never know this is another great Group mm. One um, at Ellerslie race five right let's move on to the Bone Crusher which is such a cool race. I love the Bone Crusher. I remember going to Ellerslie maybe three years ago when Melody Bell came back, or was it two years ago? For Three years ago, was probably Dan's, before. Dan's Dance? Was it that year? Oh, no, I think it's a bit later than this. It was when Melody, was Melody Bell... Melody Bell and Dan's Dance Dance went head-to-head down the outside fence. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. I just remember it was Melody Bell's swan song before mm-hmm. she kind of retired, and she cleaned them up. She hadn't done too well in the race before that because she got locked away. I can't remember what the 2,000 metres. It was the Tarapa, wasn't it? The Herbie Dyke. But, yeah, first time I'd ever seen her in the flesh... Melody Bell was so good, and she wasted them at Ellerslie, and I just remember this race forever for that. So uh, I can't wait for this Saturday again where we've got some of New Zealand's best horses like Sharp and Smart, Legato, um, and a few others running around in it as well, mate. So uh, what are you thinking about it, mate? Are you got uh, 10 bucks on Manifique at 26s, or what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Manifique are not friends anymore, <laughs> uh, just hard. quietly. Too hard, eh? Yeah, no, I'm out. I've... Uh, yeah, there's been a bit of cash go down the drain on uh, Manifique. Uh, I really like Ladies Men. Yeah. Um, I think uh, since coming back to Australia, has run two pretty good races, setting up perfectly for the 2000. Had one start at 2000 metres. That was in the Livermore. And it put them in a body bag. Yeah. That was my best bet that weekend and um, smoked them. So I quite like the idea of Ladies Men, but Legato... A dollar forty-five. You're not going to make much money off that, so you've got to you're going to have to either start looking around at the exotics or even some of the power plays. Um, I do really like uh, one bold cat as well, and I've seen here Legato to win and one bold cat top four three dollars. One bold cat's just been going great guns, um, but there's just so much in here as well. Like Malliston's been good the last couple of starts. Sharp and smart, who knows, if he turns up, he could just beat them all up. Pontura was going so well into that off-track last start. El Vencedor's been just going absolutely great guns as well. Like, that's $31 and $5 a place. $3.30 top four for El Vencedor. I mean, I could just go through and name every single horse in this race and say you've got a chance here. The first four in trifecta is going to be huge in this, if you can catch it. Um, let's just chat about Legato because we were talking about before um, you'd heard an interview from Ken Kelso saying that it doesn't even matter if it wants this race. He's still got They've still got the bonus with this going over to Australia. Do you think Legato is going to win it? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I just, um, I think. Last time you didn't think so. You yeah, were concerned. No, yeah, well, I, was concer- I was concerned mainly by the draw and then it was just an absolute weapon of a ride from Ryan Elliott to, get her in front of uh, Campionessa, yep. and it was, yeah, it was a very confident and good ride. That was one of the best rides I've ever seen from Ryan Elliott. Um, maybe that might happen again, but, yeah, I just, um, it was just that interview the other day with Ken Kelso when they were chatting about the bonus for, you know, the the, the point series or whatever it is, and, and, and his comment saying, oh, well, actually, she doesn't need to win this to win the bonus sort of made me think, okay, well, do you want to win it? Yeah, does, like, it, does it matter? Are you does gonna, it matter? Are you going to really you slog wanna, your guts? To... Yeah, you just want to rake up that cash and then go to Aussie and click that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I might be reading into it way too much. It's funny, eh? Like, I, I never even knew about this point series. I just put a punt on on a Saturday and enjoy myself. And then you hear about this bloody point series, which is going on, and you're like, oh, shit, now what's, that throws another dynamic into the mix, eh? Maybe we just don't get fooled by it, though. Legato has constantly proven herself as the best horse, one of the best horses in New Zealand. 
Um, so maybe that's just yeah, that's just it. But a dollar forty-five, no one's really going to be taking that on too much, are they? I like ladies' man as well, mate. I think it's definitely a top four, um, top four hope. I think it's is it what is it um, at the distance? It's one from one at the distance, like you said, winning the um, Liver Mole, which is twenty forty actually. So uh, I thought Sharp loves and, good tracks. Yeah, yeah, it's a, eight starts, four wins, a second and a third. Very good horse, gone well in Australia. I thought Sharp and Smart was pretty good last start. I'm not going to have a bet on Sharp and Smart, but I thought it was pretty good. It did a bit of work. It really put itself in the race. It wasn't good enough to beat Campionessa and um, and Legato, but I thought it was good, and it and I feel like it could improve from that run again. I'd love to see Sharp and Smart back to his best and just Roger just charging around, putting it in Hong Kong and doing all sorts of things, you know? Like, I just love uh, it. Oh, yeah. I would too. I, I'll never forget his interview at the uh, auction night, the slot auction. Like, wow, well, the jockeys, they'll just be their luck or sauce. <laughs> I, I don't know what he was on about, but I absolutely loved it. It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's that, that horse is bred to sprint, isn't he? He's like... Well, you don't know that, don't you? <laughs> <He's laughs> it's just yeah. so good. Um, I really like Mally Stone in this race, and I'm so surprised to see it go out from eighteen to twenty-one dollars. Mally Stone was fourth behind Legato last start in Campionessa. It was almost last on the corner, um, and came home really, really strongly. In between these runs, it's had a trial alongside Legato. They ran alongside each other, not both, not asking much, but um, they were they were sort of toe to toe. Uh, 1,600 metres before that, it was very strong finish. Um, and in the Zabil Classic, which was on Boxing Day over 2,000 metres, it hardly got a run. It's been right there or thereabouts, and I just think 21 bucks is stupid money. Um, so seeing a little uh, power play there, Legato and Melly Ston to run top four. Legato's going to run top four, obviously, and Melly Ston's paying $3. I think that's great. And then I saw another one, Ladies Man, $3. Okay. I seen another one here, Ladies Man and Mally Stone, top five at four eighty. So I'll be having a crack at those two, I think. Okay. Aquacade's another one that we haven't even talked about who's going really, really well. Just not sure if it's going as well as last season. Yeah, I'm not sure if it likes the wet tracks a little bit more, you know, like needs a little bit of cut out of the ground. Has mm. it raced at Ellerslie this time? I don't think it has, is it? So this is the first time we're seeing it at Ellerslie. No, it's run but ran yeah, ran third. I'm not sure what that was in. Yeah, I, don't, I think that was pre, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was pre. Oh, yeah, of course. Yep. Yeah, that would have been yep. before. That would have been the Auckland Cup. Yeah, so I guess we're going to find out how that's going to go um, at Ellerslie, the new Ellerslie, the, the new, big E. The new Ellerslie, that's exactly mm-hmm. right. Um, good luck if you're having a crack at that because there's plenty in it. Maybe have a trifecta in the first four, just have a go. It could pay thousands. Could. Great race. Really, really looking forward to it. Good luck to everybody that's involved in that, and good luck if you're having a crack. We'll go through one more race, and then we want to get your best bet. So keep those coming in. Let us know if you think we're right about the bone crusher or system mistakes or not. Hopefully Luke's on the plane getting in the comments and letting us know his thoughts as well. Ted, Paul, Paul Wilcox, please let us know if we're allowed to go on the 6th of April. The GOAT. I don't know how Rubicon Reigns went today, but it was racing. I had a bet on it. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay. missed that. Anyway, righto, the Auckland Cup. Uh, race 9 on Saturday at 4.15 p.m. This is the flagship event of the Auckland Cup. Carnival, of course, run over 3,200 metres. Um, and I always really hate going through the form for these races because I never know what I'm going to do. So, Dan, take it away, mate. Home, this race is just impossible, eh? Like, um, some people are going to pick this and they're going to... Um, this is one of those ones like the Melbourne Cup. You put a dollar each way on everything and then you can say you're back the winner. I agree, yeah. So you go all Luke Kimmies on it and uh, you just start <laughs> throwing darts. Um, but... Um, If I was going to have a bet on this race, I'd have two bets. I'd back two horses. I'd have an each-way crack on Trust in You, even though I dropped it a couple of weeks ago because it didn't go too well in the Avondale Cup. Backed up last week at LZ and ran on real nicely. And I think those sort of 40 or 50 days between its last start at Pukekohe and then the run into um, the Avondale Cup was maybe telling. But then that run last start looked like it was like, well, okay, maybe, maybe... Maybe this is set up perfect. So trust in you, $9. Even take the 2.5 top four. So $9, 2.5 top four. The other one I'm going to have a crack on is Fierce Flight 14s and $3.30. Um, after going back through and having a bit of look, this horse carried 58 kilos in the Wellington Cup and almost got the job done. Mm. $14 and $3.30. I think... Uh, 
53 kilos so it's dropped five kilograms and it's paying 14 dollars and three dollars 30. it's only had one start over the distance for that second i feel like that's uh that's value and that's overs and i think um i, I like that 14 dollars and three dollars 30 top four trust in you nine dollars and two dollars fifty I agree with you on fierce flight. And if you look at the Avondale Cup, like we talked about at the start, it was coming home very, very well um, for about sixth or seventh, was it? Um, seventh, yeah, yeah, seventh in the Avondale yeah. Cup. It was coming home really strongly, beating a lot of, running past a lot of horses. Uh, so it's obviously in good form, likes a good track. Why not? 14 bucks to me is value. You're not on Asterix. Uh, I like, I mean, look, I, I just, I, I struggle in a race like this to take four dollars twenty yeah, for any horse. That's the thing, isn't it? You know, like and yeah. even Dionysus. Like I love Dionysus, and I think that's a really good, uh, really good chance. Six dollars fifty and three dollars thirty. I think it's a grace chance. Asterix grace chance. Terra Matica grace chance. Good oil was even a great chance. I think it went pretty well last start. Mark Twain. I love Mark Twain as well. It's six dollars, but yeah. I just um. Yeah, it's just a minefield. So, like, I'll take the value and I'll go. Those are the two that Your I'm going to go Your Khan Hunter's for. in here as well. You haven't mentioned Yeah, that. I know. Yeah, they're all in here. Wasaki yeah, but, as well. Yeah, yeah. You, I, can, you can just name all of them. There's all this other one um, other one down the bottom here. Is that Funga, Fungahoo? Fungawehu. Fungawehu? What is Fungahoo? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Fungawehu? That's a tough um, one. That's a really tough that's one. But that's one its last two starts and look really impressive at $9 and $2.50, top four. My yeah. Maybelline Girl won really well. Last week at LZ. Ah, paying like 16 bucks uh, as well. I don't know anyone yeah. that went on that. <laughs> well, I know. My mum's best friend. She's oh, like, oh, that's, well, that's <laughs> after makeup. And I said, get away from me. Just get away from me. That's right. Yeah, that's really niggly, isn't it? Yeah. That's good. Oh, okay. You have one dollar each way, bet. Yeah. Okay. You're right. You might as well have a crack. Um, my dad really likes Khan Hunter. He's been following you into that over the last few weeks. But um, I know you're not that keen on it. But I think it could go pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like Fierce Flight for value. I put a bit on Mark Twain a few weeks ago uh, when I actually realized that it was racing. <laughs> I, got, I forgot that. I forgot about that horse and saw it and bet on it at $9. I'm pretty happy with that with that bet at the moment because it's in good form. I feel like, you, you know, I've never won anything on, on a Cups race ever, I reckon, ever. But I feel like the horses that win are always the fittest. And I think Mark Twain's fit. I think Trust in You is fit. Um, so those two horses look pretty um, look pretty tidy. There's a really interesting runner in there. You are a star who won the Auckland Cup last season. Last season, it ran fifth in the Wellington Cup, didn't have a jump out, didn't have a trial, went straight to the Auckland Cup and won it. So it ran fifth Wellington Cup, won the Auckland Cup, nothing in between. This year, it's run sixth in the Wellington Cup and again is going into the Auckland Cup fresh up with one kg less than it carried last year to win the Auckland Cup really impressively. So exactly the same conditions essentially, um, and it's paying 16 bucks. So um, make it that way probably, you want. Probably have a little go of that, you know, why not? But, yeah, it's an absolute minefield. Terra Matika, Ocean Billy, I love that horse. It's such a shame that it's not come back as strongly as it was when it won the Auckland Cup two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. Great race. Good luck if you're having a go. Pre-defer. Honestly, yeah, you can make a case for everything. It's quite classic. Have a crack at the first four and, um, uh, and trifecta. And good luck with that. Good luck to everybody involved in the punt, in the Auckland Cup. Let's get to some of the comments and see what people are thinking about their best bets for the weekend. Uh, so we've got Brendan here who is after Amendable at Flemington Race 7. We've got Tony here who is big on Adam I Am this weekend. Uh, obviously there's, there's a couple of votes in here for Legato, mm. which is following the boys in. We've got Ladies Man mm. uh, from Big Bruce in here. Uh Candle? Candle. Ooh. Oh, all, all, Candle. All, all, all I got close. I got close Dave, to making that my best bet. D- Dave's in there. We've got Tim, who is on Infa, on Ellerslie this weekend in race three. Um, and I'm just going to go into the Facebook page as well. So I'll grab a couple oh, you're there. On, mate, you're on fire. You're on both, Adam. Yeah, a lot of admin going on, but on. <sighs> um, but that's good. So we've got, uh, we've got Wayne here for Autumn Angel, Flemington Race 6. We've got Gary on Mark Twain to win this weekend. Mm. Uh, Jack's on uh, Terra Preta, Trentham Race 9. Uh, one of the best ones I've seen here is... Uh, uh, Rena Schuster, who's got uh, Crusaders to go zero and three. That's 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 a great one. There. <laughs> Who are they playing? Uh, they're playing um, Drua, I think. Are they? Yeah, yeah. and they're they're playing overseas. So if we keep going down as well, 
We've got uh, Jimmy Starr in Newcastle. Scratched. Um, yeah, hey, unfortunate there, James. Uh, ooh. I reckon one of the cooler ones here is <clears throat> Cohen's gone. I'm going to retire after last week's pick. You know, obviously the boys are saying, you know, you can't win them all. Got to go again. So he's going for Espionage, race five at Randwick. And we've got a couple more. So Regan's on in for as well. There's a few on that. Mm. Uh, Matt's got a got a couple here. So we'll finish on that. Matt Hill, he's got race two Randwick to Darn Lizzie. Matty Hill. He's, he's everywhere. We've had him every week. I love it. Race eight, he's going for Militarize and in Gold Coast, it's Viminel, Viminelli. I'm okay. best best shot there, mate. We but, wouldn't know uh, anyone yeah. either, but that's good. Okay, Viminelli, Matt Hill. We need a confirmation if it's the actual commentator or not. We should really send all these screenshots oh, of it? Matt yeah. Hill commenting to Matt Hill, the commentator at Flemington. And say, mate, see if we get in the commentator's box at Flemington. That's it. Someone's imitating you out there. <laughs> hey, who, who you got, mate? Who you got? Any other bets? Um, well, we're not getting into the best bits, you know, but yes, no, yeah, yeah, you got any yeah. Others? well, look, um, I will mm. say that that, that um, power play in the Auckland, uh, sorry, in the Bone Crusher, Legato and Mally Stone top four for me was nearly a best bet. I just think that's a, I think that's great money. Uh, Slipper Island in race eight at Lillesley, um was running into all sorts of horse ass last start um, on Saturday. Didn't get a crack at them whatsoever. It's a good horse. I think Ted had it as his top selection in that race, so... Uh, I thought that might be a good bet. One other, but I know it's one of the lads' um, best bets for the weekend, so I won't be naming that as well. But, uh, yeah, Slipper Island Race 8 was another one that I thought might okay. be a good crack. I've you, got a few. You've got a few. <laughs> Is that I've what you I've been first? looking around. Yeah, I've got a few. I've been looking around. Um, this one was almost my best bet, but it's called Savicat. I think it was my best bet, you know, at some point in the last few weeks. Um this horse uh, won really impressively on a good track uh, four starts ago and then failed, I think it was at Trentham maybe, on a heavy track um, and then on oh a no, Hastings heavy track and then run a nice seventh over 1,500 at Ellerslie and then run a really nice fifth over 2,000 metres last start at Matter Matter. I think it's up for it. Ryan Elliott's on board, drawn 18, $9 and $3, Savicat. The last race at LFZ, race 10, um, I think that's an each-way play, and I almost made it my best bet. The other ones, there's a couple more that I've got that I like on the weekend in Australia. Um, I think race 7 at Randwick, we're taking on thinking over the uh, Everest winner, but I think Espiona went huge last start up against um, Imperatres down the straight. Was that over 1,000 metres? Yep. And it absolutely blew home from last and flew home, and I thought that was a really good run for third. Up to the 1300 now, $3.80. I think this this horse got a chance of blowing out uh, Think It Over, so watch out for that. And then the other one, one of my favorite horses, Militarize. I uh, love yeah. this horse. Yeah. Um, it's such a shame that every time I backed it, I thought, oh, $8, $10, I've got real good value here. Um, and it doesn't win. <laughs> um, but now, like, I feel like it's in a race where it's just going to absolutely put them in a body bag. It's paying $2.30. Is J Mac on? Yeah, J Mac's on. Is he? Yeah, it's Hong Kong Racing Club, isn't it? Or something like that, eh? China, China, China Racing, Racing, Racing Club. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good on them. Yeah. Uh, I know you've mentioned Militarize a few times. That was one of the best bets from somebody out there in the community, too. So who knows, mate? That could be their $100 best bet. No, we're on talking Militarize. about. There was a few there for Infer. Are we going to fail to mention this horse again and not put it in? Because We've it's, got scratch it's probably just going to beat them up. Probably just going to beat them, eh? $2.80, barrier 15. Uh, I thought Valdez Older on that race is actually quite good in behind. Is that Rogie's horse, Infer? Yeah. Yeah, probably go here and then it's probably going to go to Australia <laughs> and win the Queen Elizabeth and then go to Hong Kong and win everything there, right? And then to Ascot. <laughs> yeah, maybe go to the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> it is a very good stayer. It has been smashing them, so that's a really good best bet. Uh, mate, before we get to the best bets, this weekend, the new market handicap, Tayako are going there to absolutely dominate. They've backed up uh, Skew Whiff into the new market, which I think is a little bit of a surprise, although you did say that last weekend. Uh, and, of course, Imperatures, who uh, s- opened at 280 for this race. And I just thought, we're never going to get 280 on Imperatures again, so you've got to have a go. That's great money. I, I know it it's is. carrying a lot of weight. But they wouldn't take it to this race if they didn't think they could win it. Unpopular um, position here. I love Imperatriz and I hope she wins and I hope she wins oh. carrying the $2.40. Oh, 
carrying two dollars forty or paying paying two dollars. Is it only paying two forty now? Fifty eight, yeah, two forty yeah. now. Um, just quietly, and I like this earlier. Oh shit, it's taking a bit of cash. Master Fay. Oh, but is that in the race? Yep. It was thirty one dollars and six dollars a place. It's now twenty six dollars and five fifty. Master Fay. Imagine this. Chad Ormsby takes this horse over in its third start <laughs> after absolutely cleaning up on KM night and then just blasts away and puts him in a body bag. I don't know if there's uh, a pair of trees to win in Master Faye top four. If that's around, I don't know how much I can get for that, but um, yes, please. Oh, I'm so glad that you pointed that out. A lot of the community wouldn't have realized that either. I didn't know Master Faye was in this race. That That's cool. Oh, uh, yeah, Could I would, be a good horse. Yeah. But it's not going to beat Imperatriz, mate. Maybe. Imperatriz is like... 58 freak. kilos. Yeah, too much. Mate, David Ellis said that he he spoke to the handicapper in Hong Kong who used to work in Melbourne, and he spoke to the best form analyst he's ever come across, and they all said that Imperatriz can get the job done, so he's taken the horse there. Mark, Mark Walker will have it under control. Opie's over. Yeah. 280. Well, what was 280? Surely Imperatriz. Get on. Anyway, you're backing another Kiwi, so that's okay. Yep. Manny no, fr- I think a job, you know, I'd love to, for them to Quinella it. I'd like Imperatrice to win every single race that ever races and ever again, which is really a possibility. It could happen. It's that good. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. I'd, yeah, I'll be getting in right in behind it. Maddie from Punt IQ thinks Imperatrice should get the job done, um, but it's going to be 40 degrees over there. <laughs> so, he's sort of like, will the horse cop it? Who knows? It's pretty hot and mutter mutter, but it's not 40 degrees. Do you need to go to the toilet? He's ready to go, right? We've got to get on to one more, though. One more before that happens, before Dan bursts at the seams. Ted does have a winner for us tomorrow before we get to his best bet. Uh, if you're watching the tote ball races tomorrow, even if you're not, you better get a bet on this because uh, Ted just doesn't throw them out around uh, around the Saturday too often for us. He really likes Wits End, which is in tote ball race for tomorrow. I think it's still paying 250 opened at 280 he reckons that can get your weekend started pretty well. So why not put plenty on that uh, and then put it into some of these best bets as well as Imperatriz uh, as, a, as a multi over the weekend. But yeah, Ted likes Topol Race 4, uh, Wits End. But Ted's best bet for tomorrow, sorry, for Saturday is Ellerslie Race 1, Pearl of Alsace. All the value has gone coming from 280 to $2, but that's probably a good sign. This horse is absolute class. And it should be a great way to kick off the day for you. That is Ellerslie Race 1, Pearl of Alsace. Uh, that's Ted's best bet. We're going one for one here, mate? Yep, let's do it. The GOAT. Ellerslie Race 2, number 4, Financier. Your BGP bless bet. One last start at Tarapa dominantly. And funny enough, the one that came second was... Can't remember. We talked about it earlier, didn't we? It was. If Raj spelt backwards... Oh, Jaffe. Jaffe. There we <laughs> go. Jaffe run second. Come out and frank that form. This horse looks like a really nice horse going up against Adam I Am. But I think um, I think this horse got a really good chance to just run over the top of them and uh, put them away here. Bless bet. Great work. That's the go. Ellerslie race two financier. You caught me out there, Dan. Good work, mate. Thank you very much. Righto. Punt IQ. Matty from Punt IQ has sent us a best bet this week. He's going to Ramwick. Race six, Private Eye, who ran second to Imperatriz uh, last start down the straight at Flemington, drops back to Group 2 level and is a genuine Group 1 wait-for-age horse. He went within 0.2 lengths of Imperatriz down the straight, and while she is winning the new market, there you go, while she's winning the new market with, 20, with 58 kgs and becoming the first mare to carry 58 and win since the mighty Black Caviar. So is Imperatriz his best bet or is it Black <laughs> Or is it Private Eye? Love it. Private Eye will take care of this field at weight for age conditions in Sydney. I think he is genuinely one of our top five sprinters in Australia. And if he can hold his recent rating, he'll be awfully hard to beat here. That's Matty Punt IQ, Ramwick Race 6, Private Eye. Cheers, Matty. Uh, Ellerslie, meeting two, race four, son of a son. This is yours? Yeah, this is mine. Good. Dan's best bet. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. So, um... Looks like a really nice field, um, but this horse keeps on winning. It won really well last start at Ellerslie, and then won really start uh, really well the start before in a maiden. Loves a good track. Narco Haley on claiming three kilos. Um, stepping back from the 1,600 to the 1,400, it might suit at Ellerslie because it might jump and run 
Eight dollars and two dollars eighty. Nice, mate. That was a good one to last start. Righto, Scan Man, Westport Friday, race eight, Sailor Boy, three dollars twenty. Price opened at five dollars. He reckons it's disappearing quicker than a pint at the Cos Hotel on a Friday night. Been there before, Dan? Nope. Manners in a mon- monumental drop in class make him a huge top two hope and a big winning one also. Usually steps quickly and from the good draw over 2,000 metres at Westport looks a super bet. I would be playing the top two more heavily with Blue Rock Dancer in there who is the clear danger. That's the Scan Man Westport tomorrow. Race 8, Sailor Boy paying $3.20. Dan, Fitzy's best. Fitzy. Fitzy's gone to Westport Friday. Race 11, Ubery Street. Ubery Street? Ubery Street. Ebury. Ebury. Ebury Street. Who knows? (laughs) <laughs> Good barrier when she uh, should hopefully sit in the trail from there. She's got a real good speed, and she can pick them up even from three back on the peg. She's a nice price, $10 and $3.30. Whoa, how good. Fitzy's throwing out $10 winners is best bet. That's outstanding. Right, fire, you... fire him up for the uh, for the punters club. That's right. That's exactly right. Right, you go, Luke's, mate. All right. Uh, Kimmy's has gone meeting for Trentham Race 9, Terra Pretta. Gritty one last start when she got the money, has beaten and been beaten by some good horses to frank the form. We'll be on a good track this time, so there's a query. But $4.50 and $1.90 will go good each way. Nice, Luke. I think that was one of the other, uh, one of the, somebody in the community had that. It was quite a few. Yeah, quite yeah, a few yeah. comments. Okay, yeah. great. Good to have a bet at Trentham on set. Do you re- will, the, will they go ahead? Trentham? <laughs> <Chance. laughs> they might get through three races. Oh, uh, no. Righto. My best bet is Ellerslie Race 6 Marengo paying $3.30. I know this is getting a little bit weird because it's another one of Daniel Narclay's horses, but I don't know. He's got some good horses, and this thing has run three seconds in a row. But this weekend, the blinkers go on. Um, if you see its last three starts, it's been running around a little bit with 100 or 200 metres to go. I reckon the blinkers going on will make all the difference. I see my Annie Bell, who was the blessed bet from a couple of weeks ago, is in this race, but I thought it was a bit ordinary. Um, so, yeah, I like really like Marengo. I think it's going to hit the line hard. Could get to the front and be very hard to chase down. Race 6, Ellerslie, Marengo, $3.30. Good luck if you're having a crack. I've just had a look at some of those. If you multi the top four of all of them, there's, there's a $3, there's a $2.80 in there. Um, so it should be a good good winning for a multi. Absolutely. $20 will probably year twelve thirteen hundred. Here we go. Could be another one of those weekends. Good luck if you're having a crack. Remember to get your events tickets. We've got plenty going on. Keep your eyes peeled for April peeled for April the 6th, depending on what we're doing there. We've got the Race by Grins on April the 12th. We've got the Wars on April 13th. There's plenty of great stuff happening out there in the racing world, and we just want to keep having fun with everybody in the community for the rest of the season. So make sure you get stuck in and you get involved. We've got the Wars on the 13th, Dan. Are the Wars going to kick the season off well tomorrow night against the Sharks, mate? Absolutely. Body bags for the Sharks. You reckon? 13 plus. 13 plus? 13 plus. Easy Down at Go, mate. Go Media Stadium. I know you really need to go to the bathroom, mate, but do you think they have a light show at Mount Smart tomorrow night? Chances. Yeah, hopefully. Right. Eh? Mate, good on you. Good luck. <laughs> you are absolutely desperate. Thank you very much, as always, to everybody that sent in their best bets and contributed. We'll look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Good luck if you're having a crack at the Auckland Cup this week. Gamble responsibly. Have a great weekend. Game, set, and match. Up. Shut the gate. They're going to do it again. The Kanaka Million goes with and stays with. We're up in front, Delzeo. Long run. But here's the calls now. He's coming. He's going to get there.